Hi everyone, it's Steve, and I'm going to do a little bit more in-depth review of the SAR, SARS Amaz, SAR, S-A-R-9. Now this is the one I got Gretchen, my girlfriend, back for Christmas, and we got some stuff here in the box. We got the little SAR sticker, we got the lock, we got the little booklet, got the little ATF thing. And here we got the meat, the good stuff. So it um, comes with a spare mag, spare back grips, side panels, a couple cleaning rods, a pusher and a brush, and a little pin pusher to change out the grips if you so wanted to, which we did. So we're going to start off Guns unloaded, you can see in there. Remove the magazine, no zitches, that's an allergy. All year round is allergy season for me. So anyway, you got your little pin pusher here. You're going to just, you put it in. Back piece comes off, side panels comes off, they're marked. Uh, we put the smallest ones, both the back strap and the side panels on for Gretchen. And it still feels pretty good for me, but it um, uh, feels better for her. She's smaller. I probably would have gone with the mediums, if not maybe in the large, but I don't know. We didn't try those out for me because we were just setting it up for her. So on the SAR, the reason I got it for it's a striker fire and it has the safety. Now you can see the safety right there. Let me get some light on that. And it's ambidextrous. Yes. Gretchen is a southpaw. So it works for her, works really good for her, her being a southpaw. Me, yeah, I'm right-handed, so I got no problems with that. Um, the trigger, you notice a little red, and it's on both sides. See a little red in there, I guess maybe, I probably don't want to put too much light in there. Anyway, um, that means that it is cocked. Now it is unarmed, unloaded, and you can see it stays back. Now, I guess other guns do this. My XDS does it a little bit, but I don't think to this extent. Um, there's probably other ones, but. And then it comes back out. Now, as for the trigger feel, it's not, I, I prefer hammered guns because it, I feel you just get a better trigger with those, but that's just my personal preference. I do own a few, well, three, four striker fire guns now, but let's listen to this. It's, it's a little bit of take up. You can see my finger there. It's not bad. Definitely you can hear it and you can feel it too. Um, not bad, not bad. Uh, there it is. Trigger scale. Now, it's hard to get a good reading on this gun because the trigger is at a weird angle compared to most of the guns I have to deal with. So to keep the safety part engaged with this, I got to pull at a weird angle, which I think throws is going to throw off the that one hit about five pounds. Let's try that again. Get in there. Oh, that slipped. It did go off. Why did it go off to uh, just about five pounds? Let's try that again. Like I said, it's just it's a little weird, but I suppose if I took some tape and taped that down, I could get a. I wouldn't have to worry about it slipping so much. And five pounds. So I'm going to say it's about a five pound trigger pull. Uh, that was three of them. Now, like I said, it is a little bit. Um, let me go this way. You can see how it, but it feels good. So I think for a striker fire, it's quite adequate. It's not a target pistol, even though you can use it for targets, you know, target shooting, obviously, but it's, it's a carry pistol. Has Picatinny rail, 
Uh, it comes all the way out to the end of the dust cover, which is nice. The slide release, slide stop, if you want to call it that, I, was, I will always release, call them releases. It's it's kind of meaty. I don't know how well you can see that in there, but but then it has this little beveled part that you know sticks up from the frame. And the reason, my understanding is, because somehow people while shooting will get their finger in there and push up on that somehow. I don't know. I'm not sure how they do that. And I guess maybe it's because my the way I've, I've always shot handguns or auto loaders. I always tuck my. I don't know if you can see that that well. Let me get it back over here. I put this thumb down into it. There's a little notch here for the thumb. Left thumb, my supporting hand, is always over the top and pushing my thumb farther down. So you can see I'm nowhere near the controls. That's just how I've always shot and that's how I'm gonna to continue to shoot. Um, take down. Now, I, I took this apart a little earlier and apparently, cause you got, I don't know how well you can see it, right about here. And it's on both sides. Let's see if I can get the light on it. You can see it there. That's your takedown. Now apparently you don't need to have the slide back. And I found, for me, coming across the top, push now with both fingers, releasing the trigger, and then sliding it off. That seems to be the easiest way for me. So now the guide rod, which Appears to me to be, well, it's obviously a two piece, but I think the outer bigger one, bigger part here, is plastic, and then this is metal. Um, best I can tell. Um, so, okay, there's that. Barrel, just slides right out, of course. Like every semi auto in the world, you know, not everyone, but most of them. And it's, it's the standard lockup barrel. Now, watching the video, I, I didn't know this. I, I, I owned a Glock years ago, um, and I only shot three in my life. I'm not, a, I'm not a Glock man. That's why I don't do Glocks. But apparently Glocks have an unsupported chamber. And the best I can figure out about that or understand about that is down here where the feed ramp would be, there's more taken out to help the ammo feed into it better. But what that does is it leaves part of the casing unsupported upon firing. So if you're firing more powerful loads, I guess, it can swell and occasionally even rupture, especially if you do reloading. And then it ruptures, of course, downward, apparently, on blocks, and blows out your magazine and damages your frame. Now, I was checking this out earlier. And I cannot see, let's see if I can get some video where it's not supported. It all looks, I mean, I don't think the camera can see it as well as I do, but it looks like everything is in there just nice and neat with no lowered edges that I can tell, at least not by, by my visual acuity. So I don't got the best eyes in the world as you can tell. The, um, the rest of the bottom of the slide, or the slide, um, you got your, looks like the firing pin safety here. Your strikers here, of course. Um, and then this looks like the back piece. Which that kind of looks like plastic too, maybe. Oh, maybe not. It's pretty thick. It's like a quarter inch thick. It's, it's pretty thick in there. You can see that last little piece. And I'm sure there's a way you push the, the firing pin forward and it will slide out, but I don't need to go that far. Um, yeah. So we're going to put this back together and put it back in. Drop that back in. And get it caught where it needs to be on the barrel. Real quick, I'm going to go into this. I got my camera up high, so it's hard to see. So it all looks very, well, what I would call Glockish, XDS. Um, nothing too spectacular that I can see. Um, this piece here is going to catch on to the striker and get dragged forward, which is going to push the trigger forward and so forth. And 
So it's all pretty standard and I don't really feel the need to dig into it that much right now. Um, Cause it's just, it's like almost every other striker fire gun out there. And then the re, do it, just slide it on. Make sure you catch your, your rails. And it's there. Now, when we first took it out to shoot it, and if you look back, I'll put a little video on. Gretchen, uh, she shot it first and had a couple of jams. And I think that was just because she hasn't shot a lot recently. Um, she goes out with me less and less. But um, she probably hasn't been out with me six, seven months, I'm not sure, maybe longer. And I think she's just given a little bit of weak wrist, which you can't really do with semi-autos because it will cause jams. Um, but I, I think that's all that was. And I think she only had the two, and I, I don't recall if it jammed anymore. It didn't jam on me at all that day, so I shot just fine. Um, comes with the two magazines. Again, empty, it has little spots in the back that tell. And when you release it, it has a pretty good pop up there when you release these things. So if you're properly, let's um, lock that open. There's even more pressure. And that falls out pretty, pretty fast. So no complaints there. And the other magazine, also unloaded, falls out pretty good too. So yeah, so far, I have got no complaints about this gun. It's been a really good gun. Um, fun to shoot, feels good. So take that as is for a gun that only costs about $300. It's a base model. This is like the cheapest of the cheap models that they come out. Now apparently somebody upgraded models. Um, the white dots, get in there and so you can see those white dots a little bit better. If I can get her lined up better. There we go. Anyway. Some of them, maybe the next model up, the next upgraded, you know, upgrade up, they have the um, night vision stuff where you hit it with a flashlight, lights it up. This one does not. I, I did try it earlier in a, in a dark closet. Nope, did not light up at all. But again, that's not a big deal for us because um, I do got a laser flashlight combo I put on for her. So we're going to show you some video, a little bit of video. But yeah, the, the SAR-9 from SARS Omaz. And um, you should read up on this. I think I think these are really good guns, inexpensive. And um, if you're looking for a good striker fire carry gun, I think this would be a good good choice. All right, thanks for watching. I missed. Yes, you did. Got it. What the hell? Yeah, that shot pretty good.